It turns out that a lot of things that we do to mitigate emissions are absolutely terrific for your health. Cutting emissions from power generation, from transport, from agriculture, all of these areas have the potential to feed into making better health uh, policies, policies that in their own right would stand up as health protective. And so hunting for these win-win situations has become a minor pastime of health and climate scientists alike. An example of a win-win could be where you have a big cut in emissions, for example, from changing a mode of transport, but you also get a benefit in terms of human health. So if you imagine not taking your car to commute to work and instead replacing that car with a bicycle or walking, then you reduce your emissions on the one hand, but you get this huge health benefit on the other. So while that's an, a compelling argument for individuals to change behavior, it's also a very powerful thing once you, once you ratchet that up to entire societies. If you have thousands or millions of people leaving their cars at home and jumping on their bike to get to work, that's when we start to see this huge cost saving in terms of the health benefits gained and also the benefits to the climate from the emissions that have been averted. Another really great example of this potential for a win-win, a health co-benefit, is if we consider our diet. So everything that you eat from vegetables right through to sausages and steaks has some kind of an impact on the environment. But it turns out that the more meat-based your diet is, the higher the emissions associated with your dietary choices become. And interestingly, high meat diets and low vegetable diets also have a disbenefit for human health. There are a range of health conditions that are associated with the high consumption of red meat and processed meat in particular. So the win-win here is if you shift your diet from a more meat-based diet to a more vegetarian diet, you get an instant health benefit from reducing your risk of things like colon cancer and cardiovascular disease, and you get the benefits of the, a more vegetarian-based diet, but you also get a really big benefit in terms of the emissions that you're able to avert by making that tra transition. The really important thing about the potential for health co-benefits to feed into the climate change mitigation uh, strategies that we have available to us is that we start to accrue benefits now. We don't have to wait for climate change to occur in order to receive those benefits for the climate change that we've averted. And this is a very powerful argument for doing something about climate change and reducing emissions now. Considering decarbonising the energy sector, for example, would mean a shift from coal-fired power stations and other fossil fuel-based power production into more renewable forms of energy production which tend to have less carbon emissions. These can also be very good for human health. For example, coal-fired power stations produce a lot of particulate matter pollution that has negative impacts on human health through, for example, cardiovascular diseases and asthma. Another really important point is that health co-benefits can be accrued across all of these different sectors at the same time. So a strategic combination of policies that decarbonize, slowly decarbonize the economy into these lower carbon renewable energy systems is very likely to have a massive economic boost as well as a massive, massive public health benefit.